While shopping at my local Goodwill, I found a digital picture frame. These things were super popular back in the 2000s. You could load your pictures, load maybe even videos on them, and then they would just be displaying random pictures in your house. The reason I bought it is because I love hacking and jailbreaking devices. However, when it comes to things with me, I'm typically what they call a script kitty. Meow. I am someone that follows a guide and executes whatever exploits or things that have already been found. But I would like to hack my own device, gain access to the system, and get my own code running. How possible is it going to be? I don't know. But I want to start this journey with you. I am a complete noob. What a noob. <laughs> and I would love to learn how to develop code that we can get running on a random device. Especially with something like this, I have no idea how hard this is going to be or what kind of video this is going to be or what it's going to turn out to be, but I wanna go down this path and try to figure out what is possible. The video series starts here. It's gonna be painful because I am going to probably go through a lot of learning curves. So let's open the box and see what we got. So as you can see, I paid $10 for this, or $9.99. And it looks like there was a Best Buy sticker at one point. Interesting. If you see the black on my hand, I got ink on my fingers from <laughs> the printer I was refilling. Right. This is a seven inch DPFD72N picture frame by Sony. I figured this would probably be our best bet entry into seeing if we can get our own code running on this device. So we got some paperwork and we have the device. Uh, we'll set that aside. Let's take a look and see what else we got. I have some, oh, this might be, I think a stand for it. Yeah, so there's a little stand for it. Very nice, screws in here, just like that. Okay, now we can set this off to the side. All right, uh, what else? Oh, we have a remote. We, we could use the remote and turn it on and be like, like, oh, hello world, <laughs> here's your own code running on your device. All right, um, power cord, is there anything else in here? So we got a power adapter. So the power adapter is five volts at two amps. So you know that this thing is running on low voltage. That is it, that is all we get from Goodwill. So this is our device. This is what we're going to try to hack and see if we can get code running on it. Okay, so we have the device here. I do notice a couple of things. Looks like we have SD card slots. We could run homebrew from that. Looks like we have a CF card reader, which is uh, pretty old school. We have some buttons on the back here. We have a power button, a menu button, a reset button, view mode, view mode, it's a button. Uh, we have USB and we have power. So I would say first things first, let's get this plugged into the power strip and see what it does. All right, power lights on. Oh, it is turning on. This thing seems like it's brand new. Okay, so it's doing something. Oh, it's saying connect it to USB and I don't have a USB B. Oh, it's doing something else now. Playing the bottom number. This is the one we have to figure out how we can act. Let's see. We push any of the buttons on the back. Menu button, nothing. Oh, menu. Okay, menu's doing something. System information. We have one megabyte of memory capacity. Wait, is that one megabyte? No. Oh, it's one gig of capacity. We have one gig of capacity. Is it touchscreen? Nope. No, not touchscreen. Version 1.06.1.03. General settings. I don't see anything else that would be of interest here. What else we got? Oh, I should grab the remote. Let's try the remote here. Does the remote have a good battery in it? Dude, I think this thing's brand new. The remote works. Wow, dude, the battery in this remote still works. That's crazy. Okay, okay, so obviously we're working with a seven inch LCD. Let's see if we can go to any other options. Can I go all the way to the top? So I can scroll down, but it's not letting me go over. I'm just trying different options on the remote here. View mode. Hmm. Sometimes it looks like the Sony logo is flickering. It's it's not actually flickering. I think it. And we can turn it off. Okay, that's all the fun we're gonna have with this device for now because I need to order a USB-B cable so we can actually interface with this thing. It would've been fun if it was touchscreen though, not gonna lie. All right, let's unplug it and we're gonna take this thing apart. So I've never personally worked on a picture frame. This is gonna be first for me and how this thing comes apart, I have no idea. So let's grab a screwdriver. We're gonna grab the iFixit toolkit. They are not today's sponsor. I wish they were, but uh, they have not gotten back to me. Maybe one day they will. So let's go ahead and do that, that. Place the two screws in there and the other two. Boom, and there is one more, done. So we got four screws out, do we see anything else? Any screws behind the logo? I hate to do this, but okay, there's nothing there. Let's grab the shuriken. Okay, let's see if we can. Ooh, I'm getting a little somewhere here. Let me see if I have any plastic opening device. Okay, I have a spudger and I have a guitar pick. An opening pick, but that's fine. We're in, we're getting in. And I see a flat cable and something kind of fell loose here. Okay, whatever this thing is, I don't know. Okay, well it came out. 
I think the method that we are using to open this is working. It is working for us. So let's go down the side here. I think that's it. Now it should probably fold open like a book. Just so you know, I've never seen the inside of this device before. This is a first time for me. Ooh, I see some interesting goodies in here. Okay, let's unhook the ribbon cables for the screen. That is going to be a little challenging, considering I don't know how to work on electronics. Just kidding. Ah! Got him! <laughs> but, uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't want to rip these screen cables. This is the only device we have and it was $10. Okay, we're gonna use a pair of tweezers. Get in there and lift that flap up. Boop, and boop. And okay, it looks like we have, oh, that's for backlight. This is an older LCD, so the older LCDs, you have the, the signals coming in to like a TF board type thing, I think. And then we have committing sins here. I was pulling by the wires. Grab it by the connector. Just, oh, just, nope. We're grabbing it by the wires. I don't care. If I have to resolder wires, I don't. Okay, maybe not. Man, this is posing to be problematic. Let's see if I can grab it like this and wiggle it while pulling down so I don't like ruin anything on the board. Oh, I have a better idea. I don't know why I'm struggling when I have one of these. These are called hemostats, and they have little serrated teeth on them. And we will go ahead and grab them like this, and we'll wiggle back and forth, and hopefully by any sane amount of luck, this thing will just pop on out like that. Beautiful, we'll set the screen off to the side. All right, so this is likely the CPU. We're working with it, an MSPD2212B-LF. I have no idea what this is. I'm going to be doing some research over the last, or the next couple of weeks, but I see something interesting. My friends, this looks like an EMMC. And then we have Winbon, which I don't know what this is. It could be RAM, it could be, could be anything. I, I don't know, but I wanna do some research on this chip. But I do wanna say, we have a way, if this chip is not encrypted, we have a way to remove this chip from the board and dump it. We have a flash programmer for that. But alas, this video is based on the hardware. We are looking at the hardware of this device. That is the whole point of this video. Oh, if we flip the board around, what does this say? Valentine with EMMC version E? Oh, November 24th, 2008. So yeah, this, so, wow, EMMC has been around for a long time. Man, this is an old device. Okay, and oh, interesting. We have the IR sensor. This is for the remote. This somehow connects to the board via a ribbon cable. And I have no idea what that, oh, this right here is the buttons, the interface for the buttons. Oh, this is all one board. I thought this was a separate board. This is all one board here that connects via ribbon cable over to the main logic board. So really quick, I'm going to take a look and see what the CPU is and see what I can figure out. So I believe that this is the main processor. Obviously there is a considerable amount of pins all the way around the CPU. Of course, we have a Winbond chip here that is connecting directly with the processor. And more than likely when I see a Winbond, I'm typically thinking this is gonna be something to do with RAM. And then of course, since the CPU connects directly with this chip, and I know what this chip is because I know it's an EMMC because it literally says EMMC on the board. This is basically an SD card with its own little controller inside of it and NAND memory and all of that. So obviously we have a one gig chip. So I think if more than likely, this chip is probably unencrypted uh, considering the age of the device. And I'm also guessing that if it is unencrypted, this might mean we could probably gain access to this a lot faster. When I have uh, done some research in the hacking scene with, especially like with the Wii and devices nowadays, devices nowadays, they typically have the RAM uh, built into the processor and they call it like an SOC, a system on a chip. And it's like the processor, the graphics, the RAM, and there's a couple of other things, some like ARM processors and secure loaders that just keep everything locked down tight. But the interesting thing about like, for instance, I know at least with the talk with the Wii, the team fail overflow, or they were called team tweezers at the time, they had shorted certain RAM lines to ground or brought them low in order to gain access to certain bits of the chip. So they could dump them, put them all together and get a full access to the RAM. And then they could know exactly how the unit was working and things like that. I'm thinking if we can get access to this chip and we can find out if it's unencrypted, because if it's unencrypted, which more than likely, because it's 2008, I think that we can look at the system files and in a root 
format. And then we could determine what we can change, what we can modify, and things like that. I think this would be a great device to learn hacking on for the first time. I think this will be interesting to see what is possible as far as what this processor can handle and getting our own code running. To be honest, I don't really care if this thing runs Doom, but it would be cool if this thing ran Doom, wouldn't it? But what I'm really concerned about is, is if we can get our own Hello World running on this device at boot time. I think that would be the success that I'm looking for with this device. So with the experience that I have as a complete noob, the question is, can we get Homebrew running on this? If you want to see me, a complete noob, try to hack this device, subscribe. <laughs>